It's me. I thought you were going to ring last Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry, but we've been working around the clock trying to get the first issue of this magazine out, and then there's a the time difference. Well, there isn't one between us and Germany at the moment. <laughs> there should one. I'm coming home this weekend. Oh, are you? Which bit of it? And all of it. Till Monday. Oh, right. Is all right the same as, oh, what wonderful news, I can't wait to see you? <laughs> the thing is, um, Hannah's here. It's just she's got a week off before her exams start. I thought everybody was away. Joe in America, Hannah in Liverpool, the dog in Battersea. <laughs> Don't you dare. Anyway, Hannah's here at the moment, and you didn't tell me you were coming home, did you? Oh, I'm sorry to be so inconvenient. Don't be pathetic. Well, you obviously prefer a cosy mother and daughter weekend. Hannah and I aren't cosy. Well, a damn sight cosier than you and I, apparently. Oh, Bill, what do you want me to say? That I prefer to spend time with you rather than my daughter? Well, that would be a start. <laughs> well? Well? I don't feel like saying anything pleasant to you, since you've been so unreasonable. Then I think we'd better forget about this weekend. Fine. That's where you feel about it. Let's forget about it. What time do you want me to pick you up at the airport? <laughs> with any of your friends this weekend, overnight? Well, I thought half the point of me coming down this week was so that I could see you with Bill and Joe out of the way. Yes. Well, he's not going to be out of the way. He's coming back. Oh, is he? You've eaten my sandwich. <laughs> uh, yes, just for the weekend. Which? Oh, don't tell me this weekend, right? Hmm. Well, tomorrow. And as you haven't seen him for a month, you'll fly into each other's mm. arms and be extremely inconvenient if I'm hanging about. Oh, I knew you'd understand. So what, do you want me to go back tonight? No, no, of course not. Tomorrow will do. <laughs> well, then you can come back later in the week. Well, why can't I just keep out of the way? Because I say so. Well, that's not an answer. I'm not giving answers. I'm issuing ultimatums. <laughs> There'll be nobody in my digs. I'll be all alone. Be cold. No heating or anything. Well, buy your vest. <laughs> that won't keep me warm. All right. A jumper, then. I'll get the early train. <laughs> Marjorie, how clever of you to harmonise with the upholstery. Do you have an appointment? I am waiting to see my husband. Oh, Richard shouldn't be long. He's probably having a wash and brush up. We had a rather turbulent meeting. Liza, I have no wish to speak to you. Marjorie. I do understand how you feel. Well, actually, I don't quite, because I've never had a man who was unfaithful to me. But I will try to put myself in your shoes. Metaphorically, of course. Richard and I are trying to save our marriage, despite your interference. He told you that, did he? What? That I was interfering. You didn't have to. I could see that you were luring him on. Richard is a man with rather complex needs, Marjorie. I wonder if you know how to satisfy them. I think I know my husband's needs, thank you. Oh, you've got a bondage room then, have you? <laughs> Richard is a very conventional man. Well, you know him best. His affair with you was an aberration. He never called it that. I do not want to discuss it. You should. I may be able to help. After all the damage you've done. I have done everything in my power, Marjorie, to divert his attention away from me towards you. Now that you're tired of him. I never cease to point out all the things you can give him that I can't. For instance? Hand-knitted cardigan, semi-lila pudding. You seduced my husband, you shameless trollop! <laughs> Marjorie, I would like to remind you that it is Richard who started this affair, and it is Richard who seems to want to continue. Leave him alone! Marjorie, I... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> we were just having a little chat. Oh, God. I was telling Marjorie how much progress you've been making. Oh? Only last week you dropped to your knees whenever we were alone together, and now all I get is a brief embrace. So, you see, he really is trying very hard. Oh, I am sorry. 
I know you wanted us to have lunch together, but I have an appointment. Why don't you take Marjorie instead? I'm at Frankfurt. Just thought I'd let you know I'm getting the 5.30 flight. Gets in about 7. Great. I'm just attaching the last of my seven veils. <laughs> I thought we'd be having a sensible tea now that Hannah's back. No, no, it's all right. She's gone back to Liverpool. You had a row? No, we didn't. For once. Why did you do it? Bribery. Does that mean we'll have the whole place to ourselves? Well, there... There is the dog. <laughs> but I'll banish him to his basket. <laughs> Don't bother picking me up. The firm have got a minicab account. You mean to say you'd prefer a chauffeur-driven limousine to a hatchback filled with dog hairs? The flight's just been called. See you soon. Bye. Oh, Hannah, what are you doing back? There was a derailment outside Euston. Nothing coming in or out. I sat on the train for hours, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to clear it today. Damn. I know why you're saying damn. It's got nothing to do with British Rail, has it? Well, um, <laughs> I'm upset for you, of course. But mostly you're upset because I've come home. Well, I'm sure they'd have sorted it out eventually. <laughs> I'd stay there any longer. I'd spent all my money on rotten sandwiches and it was too late to get the coach. But Bill will be here soon. I'll be discreet. You don't know how. <laughs> I'll just take a thermos of soup upstairs. You won't even know I'm here. Oh, anyway, I don't suppose it matters, really. I mean, yes, it would have been nice if we could have been on our own, but if we can't, we can't. <laughs> Bill understands about family life. It's a bit warm for a fire, isn't it? Well, I, I wanted to create the right ambience. Oh. Mm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to go upstairs, then, are you? Yeah, all right. I just wanted the TV programmes. Oh, can I have a piece of that cheese? No, no, you can't. Mum, it's not my fault there was a derailment. What did I say it was? Well, starving me to death seems to indicate you think so. <laughs> There's some cheddar in the fridge. Was that a new dress? Yes, it is. It's a bit flimsy. <laughs> Got a vest under it. None of your business. Well, don't blame me if you catch a death of cold. <laughs> It's a bit dark, isn't it? <laughs> Bang goes the ambience. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been stuck in airports and planes for hours. Got used to the bright lights. No, it's all right. Leave them on now. The magic moment has passed. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, it's a bit warm in here. I thought a fire would be nice. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Yes, well, it is. I'll, I'll just sit over here till I get used to it. <laughs> Ah. Ah, what? Oh, yes. That's nice. Thank you. Is it for us? Well, who else do you think I'd have invited? And what are the knives and forks for? The main course. Is it a meal you can freeze at all? Why? Well, I had a small meal on the plane. What? I expect I can manage something. But I don't want you to manage something, Bill. I, I want your taste buds to be tantalised. Well, I expect they will be if I wait for a bit. <laughs> but uh, didn't you think I might have cooked a meal? I was thinking about getting back to you. I wasn't thinking of steak and chips. It's beurre en croute. <laughs> yes, well, you know what planes are like. They give you a tray. You've got no choice. Yes, you have. You say no thank you. <laughs> OK, OK. Well, I didn't. I'm sorry. I ate because I didn't know you'd be cooking. So you're not hungry? Well, not right at this moment. Do you like my dress? Oh, very much. And you didn't say anything? Well, I haven't had much chance. No, just, <laughs> I just thought the least you could have said, first of all, was, oh, Faith, darling, you look lovely. Well, I couldn't see. You turned all the lights out. Faith! <laughs> lovely! No. <laughs> I have force-fed you and roasted you alive. I think I'm going to bed. Do you want to come with me? Or did you get that on the plane as well? <laughs> Is 
So, you think a locked door can save you from my clutches? Have this woman washed and sent to my tent. Hello, what the place are you doing here? I thought you were in Liverpool. There was derailment. Euston's closed. <sighs> well, does your mother know you're here? Of course she does. Well, she didn't tell me. She's probably just choosing her moment. Not out of ten for timing. <laughs> you, uh, you just stop out, are you? Not tonight. I've only just got in. <sighs> Look, I know you want to be on your own with Mum. Do I? Yeah, Mum said so. Oh, it's official, then. <laughs> As long as the trains are running. Good. Thanks. Look, look, it doesn't bother me, but I know your mother's looking forward to a romantic weekend. Pretend I'm not here. Tell me Hannah was still here. I didn't get the chance. I just made a complete prat of myself on the landing. <laughs> I thought she was you in the bathroom. What did you say? Have this woman washed and sent to my tent. <laughs> oh, I wish I'd been there. So do I. Oh. Preferably behind the bathroom door. <laughs> Were you embarrassed? Well, of course I was. Oh, I'm sure Hannah understands. Well, I'm sure she does. That's the trouble. <laughs> Come here. Let me blow my nose. Oh. <laughs> I bet Madonna never has this trouble. <laughs> Are you ready now? Well, just let me take my socks off. New ones? Are they new? Yes. I bought a grey shirt to match as well. What? You never have before. No, I thought I'd cut out the middle man or woman. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean... It's interesting how recently all my white shirts and socks have become quite grey. Since you've known me, you mean? Round about that time. Oh. I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, everything goes in the machine. I'm not a person to be tear-stained because my colours run. Yes, and I'm usually wearing the evidence. Ooh. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, used to having a better myself. Yes, so am I. Shift up a bit. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, you know, I miss those clean, crisp sheets and hospital corners. <laughs> <laughs> and they always put a chocolate mint on my pillow at night. Well, all right. Think of me as your chocolate mint. Mm. <laughs> I usually save mine till the morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> mm. Oh, I should have put the machine on. <laughs> Probably room service. Oh, I'll be brief and brisk. <sighs> you don't know how to. <laughs> yes. Hi, Mum. Joe, where are you? Florida. What a surprise. You knew I was here. I mean, what a surprise. You ringing us at this time of night. It's only five o'clock here. <laughs> it's Joe. How oh, nice. <laughs> are you all right? Yeah, sure. How's college? Neat. Oh, there's some serious babes here. I'm getting into American football. I went to a Miami Dolphins game last week. Look, tell him you're ringing back in the morning. It's all right. Joe, do you mind if I ring you back tomorrow? It's just I'm in the middle... I'm just about to start something. <laughs> you can't ring me back. I had to book this call. It took me ages to get through. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> tell me about the Miami Dolphins, then. <laughs> It was Richard on the phone. Oh, what did he want? He still seems to think he's my editor. He summoned me to have a drink with him tomorrow. Oh, you don't have to go, do well, you? I was going to turn him down, but he seemed very anxious. Oh, Bill, we were going to have Monday all on our own. Well, it's only a drink. I'll be back in time for lunch. Oh, then I thought we could have a siesta. It's very European, isn't it? Yes, but they usually sleep. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was ratty. It's just, you know, you eating on the plane in your grey suit socks. I just wanted everything to be perfect. Why? It's never been perfect before. <laughs> well, all right, then. Oh, just a, a really romantic evening. What? With your daughter in the bathroom and your son on the phone half the night? I suppose I should have realised it would take a bit of time for us to get used to each other again. It's all right now, though, isn't it? I mean, now that we've got over our reunion. Well, I didn't expect to get over it. I expected to enjoy it. Oh, <laughs> this would have happened if you hadn't gone away in the first place. Oh, it was the right time to leave Vista. Liza was getting on my nerves and everyone seemed to be younger than me. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Well, it may have been good for you, but what about me? I mean, just as Joe and Hannah go, you push off as well. Well, we'll just have to make the best of the time that we have together. Mm -hmm. Mum, toilet's blocked. <laughs> Of course, it won't be easy. <laughs> I tried, Bill. Believe me, I tried. I was the model husband. I put both socks in the laundry bin without being asked. <laughs> I even went round Sainsbury's with her on Saturdays. What more could Marjorie ask of me? Marjorie was upset because you were having an affair with Liza. She wasn't giving you a domestic science exam. It was my way of showing I still cared. What, about losing a double-fronted coach house in Dulwich? And Liza talked to Marjorie about us. Oh, God. To tell her it was just a little fling. And I suppose it was after that that Marjorie threw you out. Mm. I think she'd have had me back if it hadn't been for Mr. Huggins. Who's Mr. Huggins? Well, he came to advise her on a security system. She happened to be throwing my suits out of the window when he arrived. <laughs> By the time I came home, he talked her into changing the locks and installing an entry phone. <laughs> so where are you living now? I've got a small service flat in Sydney. Mm. Four floors up and a smell of cabbage, but... I'm finding the freedom quite exhilarating. <laughs> freedom to do your own ironing. <laughs> well, Marjorie still does that. I go home for Sunday lunch and she does my washing. Does she? I think she's being a bit liberal with the starch. <laughs> well, you can hardly blame her. I'm a free man now. <laughs> for a man whose wife still does his washing, I think that's a rather overstatement of the situation. Liza's been to Sydenham once or twice. Has she? Well, once, actually. She, she said she preferred to wait till I got properly settled. Yeah, she means a marble-floored penthouse in Regent's Park. She's never been a gas ring and camp bed woman, I'm afraid. I thought it might take her back to her student days. The only thing Liza ever studies is her reflection. So, how are things at Vista magazine? There are rumblings afoot. Are there? Mm. I sense changes. Have you heard anything? Well, I'm hardly likely to hear anything in Germany. Word gets around in this business. Well, why don't you ask Liza? She's usually spreading it. Surprise! Mm. <laughs> Surprise! Their well party. What? We didn't have time to give you a proper send off when you left Vista, and Liza wanted to do something for you. Isn't this fun? It's all terribly spurred at the moment. When Liza heard I was meeting you, she thought it was the perfect opportunity to ruin it. To get everyone together. Well, I'm sorry, Richard. I can't stay. I've got a plane to catch. You can't disappoint everybody. We've had a cake made, especially. Happy retirement. <laughs> a short notice. It was either that or congratulations, it's a girl. Rachel, <laughs> find a waiter and get some champagne look, open. Look, 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 I'll have to phone Faith. Who? You know perfectly well who. Got to pick her up from Slim and Trim. I just want to tell her <laughs> where I am. She does worry so, does she? Look, where is the phone? Use mine. Oh, it's a bit grand, isn't it? Yes, I found it very useful when Liza and I were... He used to ring me from his garden shed. Hardly Omar Sharif. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Faith, um, I'm still at the restaurant. You're cutting it a bit fine, aren't you? Well, uh, they, 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 they've organised a farewell party for me. But you've been farewelled. Yes, I know, but it seems a bit rude not to have a drink. I see. Look, could you take my bag to the airport? Everything's in it, and I'll be there about five. <sighs> I thought you were coming back this afternoon so that we could say goodbye properly. Yes, I know, and I'm sorry. Let me have a word. Hello. Is that dear Faith? <laughs> this is Faith, yes. Liza here. I am sorry to spoil your last moments together. Are you? It was my idea. The party for Bill. He was so touched. Liza, give me that phone. Like, come back here. Let me speak to Bill. It's so hard to get his attention. How hard are you trying? I must say, <laughs> Bill's looking so much better. Better than what? The last time I saw him, I thought how drained he seemed. You'd been living together rather a long time. He's a lot better since he's been away. Put Bill on the line, please. Liza, give me that phone. All right, there's no need to fuss, Faith and I were just chatting. I'll get off your lap, and then you can have a proper <laughs> talk. You know, I insist. Well, goodbye, Faith. I'll try and persuade Bill to leave on time, but it won't be easy. You'll make sure of that, will you? Have you thought of trying hormone replacement therapy? <laughs> Faith. <sighs> <laughs> Thought you went back yesterday. 
Okay. Caroline had a party. I stayed there the night. I'm going now, though. Just left my diary by the phone. Do you want a hand? I can manage, thanks. What's Bill done now? Nothing. That's the trouble. I've got to meet him at the airport. Well, I thought he was coming home first. So did I. Oh, well, brilliant. You can give me a lift to the station. Hang on a sec. I'm, the... I'm not a chauffeur and luggage service. Oh, no, not that speed. And I haven't got time to make details. Well, could you give me some money? I haven't quite got enough for the entire train fare. Oh, and I thought you'd just come back for your diary. Ten quid should do it. <laughs> I haven't got any spare money and I haven't got time to discuss it. Oh, brilliant. Hannah, please, just let me do one thing at a time. I've got to rush to the airport because Bill got caught up in town. Is there some great panic that you have to leave at exactly the same time as well? Yes, I'll show you the timetable. Well, couldn't you leave it another hour and then I'll come back and sort you out? No, but I've missed the train. What's the rush? Go back tomorrow. In fact, why don't you stay till Thursday like you planned? Oh, OK, great. Well, I have the kettle on when you get back. <laughs> There's your case. Have a nice trip. Goodbye. Look, Faith, I'm sorry about the farewell party, but what can I do? Made your excuses and left. That's what farewell parties are for. They'd all organised it as a surprise. No, they didn't all organise it. Liza did. She only organised the food. Oh, I have mute and toe of frog. OK, OK. It was a difficult situation, but I'm here now. Just in time to see me leave. And, uh, Faith, 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 we can't part like this. Have you got anything to say? Yes. What? Giles rang and left a message on the answer phone. Ring him. Well, I'm going to see him in a couple of hours. Did he say what it was about? No. Probably organising a welcome back party. Oh, look, <laughs> can I use your phone card? No. Oh, don't be petty. Well, I want it back. Well, wait for me, then. Look, go and get us a couple of drinks while I make this call. I don't want to. Faith, don't suck. There'll be other weekends. Well, if they're all like this, you can keep them. Yes. Anything important? Fundamental, I'd say. I got you a lager. You can have a large brandy as well. Uh, we're celebrating. No, we're not. Just keeping up the spirit of the weekend, obviously. <coughs> Are you all right? No. What did Giles say? Only that the money men have pulled out. The magazine has folded before it was even launched. <sighs> it's impossible. I'm redundant. It can't be true. Oh, yes, it can. What's she going to do? Well, for a start, I'm not going to think about it until tomorrow. We'll go home, open a bottle of wine, and have an early night. Yes, normally that would be wonderful. I'll try and make up for the weekend. <laughs> I may not have the stamina to carry you up to bed, but I can certainly chase you up the stairs. Bill. You've got all the time in the world now to be alone, just like you wanted, haven't you? Well, not exactly. Why not exactly? Well, you, uh, you remember Hannah? Your daughter, yes. Yes, well, she hasn't exactly gone yet. You mean she's still at home? I I'm afraid so. But she's got the kettle on. 